You know what time it is. Football season, Q4. Time to close out another year of growth and prep for the next year of revenue. To bring in more businesses Q4 and beyond, you need HubSpot Sales Hub. With a smart prospecting workspace, deal management suite, and AI-powered apps, you can take total control of your operation to generate more leads and land more sales. And when you pair a sales hub with other hubs in HubSpot Smart CRM, your team will be on the same page across the entire customer journey. Leads won't slip through the cracks, and data is connected across marketing, sales, and operations, so you can better measure your impact on the bottom line. Stop sticking to the same old strategies and start closing more deals, because the best time to score is Q4. Make the switch to HubSpot Sales Hub at HubSpot.com slash sales. Howdy, folks. It's Thursday, March 23rd. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet bennett Ryla, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're talking about TikTok, a company whose fate will perhaps, quite fittingly, be decided by a choreographed dance. Even more than usual, but not for the usual reasons, all eyes are on the app today as its years-long national security drama with the United States government is coming to a head in Washington, D.C. We'll get into this in a bit, but before we do, let's take a quick look at what else is happening in the world of business and tech. Let's get crack a and Okay, first things first, the Fed, led by Jerome Hayden J. Powell, otherwise known as Fed Chair Jerome Powell, enacted a additional quarter percentage point interest rate increase yesterday. Notably, the words ongoing increases were not mentioned in the announcement, which some took to be a possible hint towards the idea that hikes are nearing an end. Still, it was the ninth hike since March 2022, and Powell said the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go and is likely to be bumpy. So we'll see how things go from here. Also, Microsoft announced Loop, which is basically its direct competitor to Notion, which is kind of this all-in-one web-based collaborative productivity and document platform. Notion, by the way, has raised around $345 million and in 2021 was valued at $10 billion. As for Microsoft's Loop, the company sees it being almost the platform that'll serve as workers' central home for all their documents and project tracking. Loop blocks are content components that can be pasted across Microsoft Teams, Outlook, Word, Excel, the whole shebang, like the company did with Teams almost. I think it sees a tool like Notion serving a really important need for a lot of people. And last for me... Some sad, but also slightly, I think, ironic news. Unfortunately, a bunch of people who may now have to use the job listing site Indeed to look for jobs are former or now former Indeed employees. The company is laying off more than 2,000 people or 15% of its headcount. According to the information last month, the CEO of Indeed's parent company, which also owns Glassdoor, said on an earnings call that the volume of sponsored jobs on Indeed had fallen 33% year over year during the fourth quarter of 2022. All right, Juliet, what are you looking at today? I'm looking at Panera Bread. Mm, delicious. Yes, yeah, so not not for the person, not for the purpose of eating at Panera Bread, though I did eat a lot of bread bowls in college, like with the with the mm. soup in them. Anyhow, today what is interesting is that Panera Bread will implement Amazon's Amazon One Palm rating system. And it's looking at about 10 to 20 stores by the end of the year. This system is interesting. I can imagine a lot of people are going to be too scared to use it. But essentially, it creates a palm print for each user, which it stores in the cloud. And that is linked to that person's credit card info, loyalty programs, and their Amazon account if they have one. So essentially, you could go into one of these stores and just uh, high five the scanner or whatever. And that is how you would pay for your items, which is pretty interesting. Uh, high five for a tuna fish sandwich. That is cool. And I feel like it's classic Amazon. Mm-hmm. The convenience factor is hard to discount. All right. What else? I'm also looking at uh, the FCC is suing a pirate radio station for over $2.3 million. And that is a larger number than it used to be able to sue pirate radio stations for. Uh, There was a new law in 2020 that allowed the agency to impose larger fines against broadcasters and also seize their equipment. What's interesting about this story is that this radio station in particular is run by two brothers who've been doing it 
for a long time, they basically do news and music for the Ecuadorian community in Queens. So one could argue that it's actually really useful for the community, but yet it's a pirate radio station, so it does not broadcast legally. And it's it's pretty much an open secret that they do it. So that's going to be an interesting case. <laughs> wow. So we're not talking about like music uh, for for like uh, Johnny Depp and Pirates of the Caribbean. No, but I'm sure if you type in sea shanties on Spotify, you'll get a good <laughs> playlist. Nice, nice. Uh, and the last thing that caught my eye today is Duolingo, which is, of course, the language learning app with the green owl that is always mad at me for not learning Spanish every day. They are branching out. Uh, it's apparently developing a music learning product according to a couple job postings that indicate it will teach basic music theory concepts. It's expanded into math already, so this does seem like kind of a, a logical next step. That is cool. And uh, they've also uh, integrated GPT-4. Very innovative company, Duolingo, and a very good TikTok account. Mm, yes. Yeah, so for today's main story, we're talking about TikTok. As I said earlier, all eyes are on the company today. And prepared testimony before Congress today, TikTok CEO Sho Chu is going to try to reassure U.S. lawmakers that the app is safe from Chinese government influence. Now, what's interesting is chances are you've probably never even heard of the name Sho Chu, despite the fact that the app he runs now has more than 150 million users in the United States. He's just not well known. Mm -hmm. uh, his Wikipedia page is less than 100 words long. Mark Zuckerberg's, for, for reference, is something like 6,000. Mm. Uh, but he has an interesting background. He's, he's a 40-year-old Singaporean army reservist. Uh, he's also a former meta intern. Mm. Uh, he's a former venture capitalist, Goldman Sachs banker. He led investments, actually, in ByteDance, TikTok's parent company, when the firm was just 30 people working out of an apartment. And uh, he totally just comes off as a level-headed, soft-spoken, smart guy and uh, someone who's known to have an amazing understanding of both Chinese and Western business culture. And now, Chu and many Americans who, who use TikTok are hoping the feds can be dissuaded from continued pursuit of a ban. It's going to be an interesting day in D.C. because, uh, stepping back, everyone's kind of in a pickle here. According to some great reporting from the Wall Street Journal, the, the government has so far stayed firm on its request that TikTok's ownership structure must change, that its Chinese owners must sell their stakes in the company, or that it will face banishment. And negotiations have spanned two administrations. There's bipartisan unity around fears that TikTok's Chinese-owned parent ByteDance will potentially seed user data and content sway to Chinese authorities. Of course, Chu refutes this. Yeah, and he posted on TikTok earlier this week, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's that's why people are really questioning whether or not this is a do or die moment. People seem to think it, it well may in fact be because he literally went on to TikTok in a very relatable looking hoodie, sharing stats about how important the app has become for millions of businesses around the country and asking users to basically lobby on the app's behalf. I'm not sure if that's ever happened before. Well... Google has repeatedly tried to get people to convince Apple to switch its messaging. That's a great point. That is a great point. <laughs> so. Now, kind of almost every day, it seems there are more and more members of Congress saying they are uh, backing drafted ban legislation. Uh, this also really, remember, it's not, a just a U, it's not just a U.S. thing. Dutch officials just joined British and EU leadership in pulling the app from government-owned work mm -hmm. phones. Uh, Right, and India has banned the, the app India entirely. India banned the app entirely. Can't forget that. <laughs> and some politicians, uh, I do think it's interesting, though, some politicians probably think a ban will help their cause. They almost like mm -hmm. a, can be marketed as them uh, like shooting down a Chinese spy balloon, but in people's phones. <laughs> Although many others could potentially fear a ban will damage their own popularity, especially uh, with the younger TikTok fan base that they're already struggling to attract. Uh, only 27% of Americans under 30 voted in the last midterms, which is actually a high mark. The U.S. Commerce Secretary said that the politician in her thinks you're going to literally lose every voter under 35. Mm -hmm. The financial ramifications are significant as well. 
And that's what I think you're going to hear Chu discuss the most following the security concerns. Uh, millions of small businesses use TikTok to market themselves, connect with customers. It's a source of income for Americans. I think he's going to discuss this at length. Mm-hmm. It's also important to remember a point that he has in his back pocket, I think, is that TikTok has become a real competitor to some of the other big tech giants in the United States. Uh, it's ad revenue will for e-marketers, uh, expected to pass $11 billion next year. That, that would top Snapchat, Pinterest, and Twitter. So he has some firing power, but uh, he's in a tough spot. I can tell you that. Yeah, I think for me, the most interesting thing that I want to know what will happen is there are, as you said, a lot of people whose entire income is pretty much based on TikTok. Yes. Now, I know this originated as a lip syncing app, but <laughs> there are certainly some influencers who that is why they have millions of followers. But there are also a lot of people across sectors who are famous TikTokers and have launched businesses on TikTok. And I just wonder what platform exists for them. I feel like Facebook and Instagram, their algorithms have made it difficult for people to make an income on them. At this point, Twitter is its own <laughs> whatever the hell is going on over there. Um, And all of these companies have had their own security concerns as well. So, you know, if you're somebody who's like making a lot of money as a fitness TikToker, a foraging TikToker, a home decor TikToker, like what is your next step? Yep. You know, whether you like it or not, influencing has become a real job and a real income stream for a lot of people. Absolutely. And and you saw in Choose TikTok that he posted, uh, you know, asking people to vouch on the company's, asking users and TikTokers Mm -hmm. to vouch on the company's behalf. You saw in the comments section, thousands and thousands and thousands of comments from these exact people Mm -hmm. you're describing saying the exact things that you're describing. I think that's one thing you're going to just hear a lot about later today. Yeah. Bam, bada bing, bada boom. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter, which you can sign up for at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have an awesome Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Perry. My First Million features famous guests like Alice Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern, went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire, thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts. 